Nice. So today's practice is one of my favorites. It is slug yoga or utita yoga, extended yoga. So this practice, um, I think slugs are considered kind of unglamorous, but they're very common where I grew up. Um, and they're kind of nice woodland creatures. So uh, slugs have a kind of amorphous quality to them. So even when their volume doesn't change, they can sort of change their shape. So if a slug is uh, really going fast, then she's, you know, long and headed in one direction and kind of extended with little antennae poking out. And then if you disturb a slug, um, you get this crunching in and drawing in and kind of a shortening uh, of the slug body. So um, today we're going to practice um, drawing our musculature in, especially along, uh, along our trunk, along our sides, so that we can have a long, longer kind of expression so we can have that sort of strength of the, the fast slug as she races along towards something. We can start um, with a bit of belly breathing. So find a comfy spot. You can sit up on a block or up on a cushion. As long as your hips are higher than your knees. And here maybe think about bringing the tops of your shoulder blades back just a little bit as if they were going to touch, just brush gently over wall behind you. So this should bring the bottom tips of your shoulder blades in slightly. A comfy spot for your hands. Your lower body root down into the mat and then already we can practice this lengthening of the spine upwards. Breathing in, letting the belly expand. And then exhaling the belly in slightly at the end of the breath so that we can move out all the air and make room for the next breath in, expanding into the belly. You can take several breaths here at your own pace. I invite you to close your eyes. Use this opportunity to come into the room, settle into your mat. Start to fill your thoughts. You to blink your eyes open again. And we can come forward into a tabletop. Just turn to the side. We'll warm up our hands and wrists a little bit. So peeling the heels of the hand and then the fingers off the mat, drawing our fists, our elbow, our wrists tight into the body and peeling fingers palm, heel the hand back onto the mat. It's like a cat kind of kneading the floor. You can do this as fast or as slow as you like. The idea here is to get a bit of mobilization and warm up through the hands and the wrists. And then you can plant your hands down underneath your shoulders with your fingers spread out. And we can take a gentle rock back and forth. You can start out with a really small movement. If you like, feel free to come back almost as far as if you're in child's pose. Be gentle going forward because that will make quite a, um, quite a stretch your forearm flexors. You can 
can come back to neutral and then you can take your hands, point your thumbs forward, fingers out to the side. You can do some rocking again, but start really gentle because it will feel different with your hands in a different position. So go slow and easy. Keeping your palms glued down. And then from here we can um, start to point your fingers back any amount. So if that's a little more a little more turned than they were before. Maybe your middle fingers will be pointing back towards your knees. Already you might feel this kind of intensely. Feel free to walk your knees closer into your hands. If that kind of uh, releases some of the weight on your wrist. And then we're going to rock really gently here. So this will be probably the most demanding on the wrist flexors. So go gentle here. And then you can come back to neutral, flip your hands around to the front. You can make fists and we will bring fists in and then we can lift one arm up. So kind of like cat paws, it's that we're not bending our wrists down onto our knuckles. Feel free to bring your weight further back towards your heels. And then Set our hands down, bring our hips back towards our heels, spread out in a balakasana, child's pose. Option here to bring your arms alongside your body. We'll take a moment here, considering our mat before we get ready to move into standing postures. When you feel ready, you can come up into a, um, a tabletop. And before we move into downward dog and standing postures, we'll um, try the Surya Churya or the Sunbird pose because that's a nice way to find some length through the body. So we can step back through our left leg, a bit of a stretch. Through the left calf. And then as you're ready, bring, lift your left heel up, keeping both hips level, and especially drawing in on your abdomen. So by drawing in on your abdomen, you give some support to your spine, but you also can give length. So pulling the tummy in, more energy shining out of the back heel, shining out of the top of the head. And then from here, if you feel comfortable, you can also lift up the right arm, thumb pointed up. Take a deep breath in here, and then as we exhale, slowly, gently come down. I'll try that on the other side, giving a press back through the right heel, right toes tucked under, a little stretch for the calf. If you feel ready, lifting the back leg up, toes are pointed down. Stay level and really tuning into the abdomen, drawing up those muscles, drawing in all the way around the trunk. Give some strength to the spine and then let that be the cue to lengthen energy shooting back out of your back heel, out of the top of your head. And then if you feel ready for it, left arm comes up, front arm pointed up. Continuing to draw up through the tummy, long through the back of the neck. Deep breath in here and then exhale. We'll come down. If you want to shake up your wrists here, feel free. We'll try another variation of Surya Turiya. Left leg comes back, left leg lifts up, right arm lifts up, drawing in on the tummy, finding length 
through the front hand, through the back foot. We'll take a deep breath in here. And as we exhale, we'll draw in. So kind of like poking that slug. And then we'll inhale, slowly stretch out again, drawing up on the tummy, sending energy back through the heel, forward through the hand, deep breath in here. Exhale, hand and knee come down. Over to the other side, stepping back to the right heel and then lifting the back foot up, lifting the left arm up, drawing up through the abdomen, length, energy shining through the back heel, the front arm, deep breath in here, and then exhale, drawing in, finding a thickening through the body, and then inhale, drawing forward, tummy draws in right away, Energy through the back heel, front arm, deep breath in here. Exhale, hands and knees come down. We'll find the position of our hands again. Spread out fingers, a little bit of fierceness through your claws, through your finger pads, pulling into the mat. Knees underneath our hips, and then we can tuck our toes. Slowly, gently come up into a downward dog. And feel free to take any movements that you like here, maybe pedaling your feet, maybe giving your head a bit of a shake. And gradually finding stillness. Step your feet out a little bit wider than hip distance here. And then as an option, you can take your right hand, reach back, towards your left leg. So maybe you're grabbing close to your knee, your calf, outside of your foot, ankle or heel. So this will give us a bit of a rotation. So as our right arm reaches back, we look, look up under our left armpit. Getting a nice stretch through the back of the shoulder, through the right side body. Deep breath in here and then exhale. Both hands come forward. Find your downward dog, hips rising up. Knees can be bent, head is heavy. And we'll reach back with our left hand, finding the right spot for our hands, the right spot on our leg. Knowing that both sides might be different, so we can be gentle about that. Breathing into the lengthening on the back of the body, back of the shoulder, left ribs. Another deep breath in here and then you exhale slowly, bringing your hands forward into a more standard downward dog. Take a moment here to shine our sling bones up and then we can bend our knees more deeply, our gaze between our hands and start to walk our way forward into a forward fold. Letting your head hang heavy, knees can be bent here. So the upper body is resting onto the thighs. Head is relaxed. From here we can ground down into our feet. Turn up through our legs, inhale, and all the way up, and then exhale, standing into dasana at the front of the mat. Side of the feet press out slightly, tailbone drops. We're drawing in on the tummy so that we grow tall through the spine, shoulders can rotate back, palms facing forward. Bring our hands to our center and then inhale, arms come all the way up. Exhale, swan dive forward over bent knees. From here, we'll press our hands down into the mat. You can bend your legs or bend your knees and then we'll step back into a plank. Option here always to bring your knees down, and it might 
Um, might feel comfortable to shine your shoulders out over top of your hands. So almost like your shoulders are coming more towards your fingers than towards your hips. But that feels like a lot of weight in your hands always can draw your hips back as well. So we're finding this plank and then finding this quality of drawing in on the tummy to support the spine and then finding length. Shining back through both heels, shining out through the top of the head, back of the neck is long. Take a deep breath in here and then exhale, move the hips up into a downward dog, reposition your feet if you need to. From here we'll take an inhale lifting the right leg to about hip height push back through the back heel shining energy out of that drawing in on the tummy so staying long here and then as we exhale we'll draw the knee forward being our squinched up slug and take a step forward so from here we're in a lunge the back leg is up off the mat. And uh, we might want to reposition our feet so that we're, our feet are parallel running on train tracks, not on the same train track. And we want to find a strong grounded connection through our feet. So your back heel will uh, lift up a little bit. And here pressing down through both feet. Front knee stays bent down more and more and more through both feet until your fingers become lighter and lighter and you can come up into Anjane Asana, high lunge, maybe looking up, take a deep breath in here and then we'll start to come forward. You can either come forward with a swan dive or you can come forward with your arms out in front. Really slow and gentle, feeling the weight going through both feet until your hands finally found the ground. We'll step back into whatever plank feels good for you. Pressing back through your hips, back through your tail, back through your heels, shining light out of the top of your head, and then we'll move back into downward dog, sitting bones, smiling up towards the sky, head is heavy, a few breaths here. And when you're ready, we'll inhale the left leg up this time, shining back to our back heel, drawing in on the tummy to find length through the body breath in here and then we'll exhale curling the knee forward close to the body squinchy slug and then we'll step take as many steps as you need help your foot forward with your hand and then let's find a nice foot position with um, both feet parallel on train tracks that are separated maybe six inches or so front knee is bent line square to the front and then we start to press down through both feet so much that our fingers get lighter and lighter and we start to bring our arms up maybe bringing the gaze up if that's comfortable continuing to shine back of your back heel continue to draw in on your tummy to find more length the spine to the chest. Deep breath in here and then decide how you want to move your arms, swan dive, or coming straight forward, moving slowly, gently to connect back to the ground. Pressing both hands down, finding a brief moment in a plank of any kind, and then exhaling back into downward dog. 
a few breaths here. Sitting bones shining up towards the ceiling. Head is heavy and relaxed. From here we can start to bend our knees, bring our gaze up in between our hands. Several steps forward until we're forward and forward fold. Letting the knees be bent, upper body supported. Spread out through our toes, maybe looking to see the mat in between all our toes. And then from here, we can charge up through the legs, draw up through the tummy as we inhale, sending all the way up. And then we can exhale, hands to hips. So from here, we can pour our weight into our right leg start to lift the left leg up any amount. If you have a chair or a wall, feel free to hold on to that on your right side. And from here, we're going to bring the left foot back, draw in on your abdomen as you do this so that you have, um, have the strength to keep this kind of balance. We're gonna step back into a lunge. Anjaneyasana, arms come up, pressing down through both feet, drawing in on the abdomen, and then finding this length, this upward expression. Deep breath in here, and then we're coming down towards the mat. So decide whether you want hands up to the side or hands out in front. Press both hands down. We'll come into a plank, and then from here we'll find a Vashisthasana or a side plank. So option just to bring both feet over to the right, and then to reach up long. Arms coming out. You can make a kickstand with your top leg, or if you like, you can bring your bottom knee down, and this will look a little bit like gate pose. So whichever you like, finding your variation of side plank, and then drawing in on the front of your tummy, also on the sides. Finding energy shining out through your heels, out through the top of your head. Option to bring your arm alongside your ear, so stretching long, the most lengthened slug. Deep breath in here, and then we'll exhale. Come back towards the downward dog. Bend our knees, bring our gaze forward between the hands. Take some steps forward. A breath here in forward fold. Rounding down through the feet, charging up through the legs. Inhale, coming all the way up. And then exhale, hands come to the hips, pouring our weight this time into the left leg, lifting up on the right leg, and then moving as slow as we need to, touching down anytime if that's going to help us to find our balance. See what it's like to move slow. Stepping back with the right leg, finding our Parallel feet for Anjaneyasana. Arms coming all the way up. Maybe the gaze comes up. Hips are square to the front. Shining light out of the back heel and then drawing in through the abdomen. Finding length. This upward expression. Deep breath in here. Exhale will start to come down towards a low lunge. Arms travel their own path connect with the ground and then from here we'll step back into any kind of plank and find Vashisthasana, any variation, but top leg kickstand, bottom leg kickstand. From here drawing in on the front of your abdomen, on the sides of your abdomen and then finding length. 
Shining light out of your heels, out of the top of your head. Option to stretch your top arm alongside your head. Find that length. Deep breath in here. And then we exhale, both hands come down. Bring your way back into a downward dog or into a child's pose. Your tabletop. Taking a few breaths here. We bend our knees. Gaze forward and take as many steps as we need. Get up to the front of the mat. Two breaths in, forward fold, Uttanasana. Head is heavy, knees are bent. Upper body totally relaxed. We spread out our toes. Ground down through our feet. Perch up through our legs. Inhale, coming all the way up. And exhale, hands will come to our hips again. So we're um, going to find that slow flow back down to Nyasana, back into lunge. We'll pour our weight into our right leg, lifting our left leg, and then we'll step back with the right leg or with the left leg. So we're going to bring our arms up. Parallel, hips are squared at the front of the mat, drawing in on the abdomen, the bottom leg coming up. From here, we're going to start to bring our weight forward more. So, more weight coming onto the front foot by angling our upper body to match the kind of diagonal angle of our back leg. From here, option to keep your arms out. Bring your hands to heart center or to your hips. And then we're going to start to press off our back toe and lift into any version of warrior three. Drawing in on the tummy to stay long through the body. You can come back. Another breath. In on Jiddiyasana, drawing in on our tummy. We come to the hips or hands to heart center. We'll step forward. We find a tadasana here, passing out the outside edges of the feet, rolling shoulders back, heart shines forward, rising up. We can find the other side, We're pouring our weight into the left foot, strong left leg, lifting up on the right leg. Like you're moving through honey. Starting to come back. Hands come down. Finding alignment for your feet. Inhale, arms coming up. Checking the alignment of your hips, drawing in on your abdomen. Getting that length, upward expression. Deciding where you want your arms. Maybe you want to keep them up. Hands at heart center on your hips. We'll come forward, finding this strong diagonal. And from here, already drawing in on the front, drawing in on the sides, shining along through our spine, all the way from our back heel through the top of our head. Starting to press off the back toe and coming forward any amount. Continuing to draw in on the abdomen, the front, the sides, energizing back through the heel, forward through the top of the head, deep breath in, exhale, come back and down, take another breath in with the arms up, Asana, hips aligning, coming drawing in. And exhale, hands to heart center or hands to hips. And then take a step forward. Finding our Tadasana, pressing out slightly on the heels. And the tailbone drop. And the shoulders roll back. Palms shining forward. Long through the back of the neck.
few breaths here. Take a breath in with hands at heart center. Leaving the hands here, bringing them to the hips. We're going to pour our weight into our right foot. Pick up the left foot. Step back, finding this lunge again. Inhale, coming all the way up. With the hands. Squaring off to the front, drawing in on the tummy, finding energy out of the back heel. And then we're going to open up to the side in a warrior two. So the back heel is going to come down. Really feeling this strong diagonal through the back leg. Nice, powerful bend through the front leg, feeling grounding through both of your feet. With an inhale, arms spreading wide. Chest opening to the side of the room, hips opening to the side of the room. Take a breath in here. We can straighten our front leg, bring our hands to our hips, bring our toes in, so we're pigeon toed slightly, looking at the long edge of our mat. Take a deep breath in here and then exhale. Knees are bent, hips are moving back. Maybe your hands come to blocks or they come to the floor. Coming down any amount. Letting your head be heavy. And your knees stay bent so that your sitting bones can continue to shine up towards the ceiling. Take a deep breath in here, and as you exhale, hands come back to your hips. Bending through your knees, pressing down through both feet, and on your next inhale, coming up, long, tall back. We'll bring our hands to heart center. We'll pivot into a crescent lunge facing forward. And then we'll step forward, both feet together. Shavasana at the front of the mat. Here we can bring our hands to heart center or onto the hips, pouring the weight into the left leg this time. Right leg lifts up and then slowly, gently we're moving through honey, finding our Anjanasana, press the pose on this side. Inhale for the arms to come up, maybe the gaze, drawing in on the abdomen, growing tall out of the spine. Palms together, bring in the heart center, and swivel our back heel down. Connecting right away to the grounding feeling of both legs. Having a strong diagonal through our back leg. Opening up, opening the chest wide to the side of the room. Hips opening to the side of the mat, side of the room. Knees comes forward. Deep breath in here. Then we can straighten our front leg. Our hands to our hips. Swivel both feet to be parallel. And then pigeon toe in slightly. Bend through our knees. Take a deep breath in here to grow tall. And then as we exhale, hips move back. Back, back as we swivel the pelvis forward. Come to the ground as we come out to the shins this time. If your hands reach to your heels or under the side of your feet, you could always take that variation. Letting the head be heavy here. Letting the knees be bent enough that the sitting bones can stay smiling up towards the ceiling. Deep breath in here, and as we exhale, the hands can return to the hips. And bend our knees even more, press down equally through both feet, and then with an inhale, bring them all the way up. We'll swivel forward, let our back heel float up. And 
floor lunge. And then we can step all the way forward to the front of the mat, as many steps as you need. Turning down to your feet. Your tailbone to descend. Shoulders rolling back. Back of the neck is long. Chest is rising. Deep breath in here. Take an inhale, arms coming all the way up. Exhale, swan dive forward over bent knees. Coming into forward fold, letting the knees be bent. And hands up on the shins. Inhale, flat back, gaze comes forward, and then exhale. Relaxing down again, bent knees, heavy head. We'll do that two more times. Inhaling, hands the shins, gaze comes forward, moving at the speed of your own breath. Coming down with the exhale. And one more time, inhale, gaze forward, exhale. Coming down into Uttanasana. From here, we're getting ready to say goodbye to standing practice. And bring your feet or bring your hands down to the mat, bend your knees. Start to come back towards a downward dog and then towards the tabletop. From here, we can bring our hips all the way back towards the back of the mat and find a child's pose. Taking a moment to reacquaint ourselves with the mat, with our breath. After that standing practice, as your hips grow heavy towards your heels, think about finding a little more length through your shoulders, Maybe a little more length through your spine as it waterfalls forward from your grounded hips. Another deep breath in there, and then start to move towards a seated position. So from here, we have the um, uh, hip opener, Agni Stambhasana. So this is ankle over knee, knee over ankle. Um, maybe that you find yourself a little off center. So if your hips aren't both touching the ground, you can always put a cushion or a block underneath. Uh, if your knees are floating up quite a lot, you could support your knees a little bit. Um, another option here would be to take a pigeon pose if you prefer that. Take several breaths here, grounding down through both hips, trying to find some evenness in your hips. Growing up tall through the spine. And this, I say growing up tall, but uh, if you're in pigeon pose, you're not necessarily tall. You might be starting to bend forward. We'll do the same in Agni Stambhasana, but we're uh, unlikely to, to come all the way down. So what we're really looking for here is length through the spine drawing in to give our spine a little bit of support so that we can then start to uh, reach long. So you can start to bend forward any amount and you may find that as you incline your body forward, you feel it more intensely in your hips. So feel free if you want to bring blocks out for support, depending on, on where you are today, what supports feel good. As always, when we're uh, lengthening the muscles, we want them to be as relaxed as possible. So check your breath. Is it even, slow, gently in and out through your nose. Keep 
find yourself gritting your teeth, you can make some adjustments. If you find yourself holding a lot of tension through one of your hips, you can make some adjustments. Sometimes after several cycles of breath, we find that we do have access to more length. We can accept that for, for what it is, if that's how it is, and it's not necessarily a goal, it's just something that we notice. Be honest with yourself. As an experiment, if you are in Agni Simbhasana, you could take your hands to your feet, you get the same grounded feeling that we got during our standing postures. Hands pressing into feet, feet pressing into hands. From there, is it possible to draw in a little more on your abdomen to find a little more length for your spine? Very subtle difference. Not be something that you feel or notice today, but if you do notice that, then you can release your feet. And see if you can maintain that sense of strength and length just by recalling the sense of pressure through your feet, the grounding through your feet. And take one more breath in this posture and then start to move our way out. Or in pigeon pose, you can change however way you like. Come to the other side, stretching the other hip. Note that both sides might be different, so you might need different level of support. I feel like this block is a little too big, but I do have a bit of float there, so I'm going to take one of my sandbags. Use that. My legs are both supported. And here we can ground down into our lower body and start to lengthen through the spine, whether that's up or forward. And wherever you are starting to maybe with curiosity rather than ambition, you can move Experiment with moving forward, see how it feels. Reminding yourself that the muscles tend to lengthen best when they are relaxed. Note your breath, slow and even, in and out of your nose. Note your jaw. Tension there. Tension in the forehead, the brow, around the eyes. Your shoulders gripping. Let's make adjustments. Be curious. Noting your reactions to the postures. If you're in fire log pose, Agni Stambhasana, you can have the option to bring your hands to your feet. Experiment with that, recalling the grounding feeling of standing through the feet. Hands pressing into feet, feet pressing into hands. And then from there, is there any deeper access of the abdominal muscles strengthening? And does that help access a little more length through the spine?
to have found it, or even if not, you can release your feet. Stay with the memory of grounded feet. Take one more deep breath in here. Slowly, gently start to come up. Get rid of any props that you have. Bring your hands back. Bring your feet out a little wider than your mat and then super slow, gentle. Windshield wipers side to side. I have an option today for a alternate to our usual Pavan Mukhasana. So lying on our backs, um, Pavan Mukhasana is the wind releasing pose. So usually we pull in either both legs or one at a time. You have the option to do that today, but with the hips up on a block. So the idea here is to have a little bit of height that when you pull in one leg, your other leg uh, lengthens, and this provides a little opening through the hip flexor. So really letting your straight leg really relax. If the block isn't comfortable on your hips, you can always do this one on your back as well. For either version of the posture, you can Snuggle your knee in beside your rib cage. And then notice if you tend to hike your right hip up into your right shoulder. Make any adjustments there for alignment. Take one more deep breath in here. Gently bring the other, the other knee in because it'll change your balance a little bit being on the block. Can switch sides, right leg is long, left knee draws in, checking the alignment of the hips, counting the breath. If you feel ready, you can bring both knees in. Bring your feet down to the mat one at a time. Lift your hips up a little bit, and then block comes off to the side. Spread both legs out. Spread both shoulder blades out. Spread your arms out, palms facing up. Feet flop out, ankles relax, calves sink heavy into the mat, knees are loose, feeling an untangling of all the muscles of your thighs, front, back, sides. Relax, spread out. Sink into the mat. Finding a sense of spaciousness. In your hips. And the left and right side of your hip. A little apart from one another, just slightly. Just enough to let your sacrum land down onto the mat. Spine contact the mat, your ribs 
expand with each breath and then with each exhale, the whole torso sinks down into the mat. Tuning into the surface area of your shoulder blades. Feeling your full shoulder blades spread out and contact the mat. The muscles of your shoulders relax. Let your shoulder blades can really land. Can your arms be heavy. Let go of any gripping or tension in your forearms. Letting your palms spread out. Fingers curl in gently. Letting your neck relax. All the muscles connecting your neck to your shoulders, your neck to your head. Letting your jaw relax. Temples relax. All the little muscles around your ears, around your eyes, along your forehead, smooth out and relax. As your head sinks into the mat, feeling your awareness open outwards and upwards, imagining your head like a precious jewel box opening up to the sky, opening just at your eyebrows, letting your head feel smooth and relaxed, or maybe cooled by a breeze. Inside the jewel box is a mountain range, peaks and valleys, now open to the sky, open to the weather. Thoughts, feelings, distractions might float by. When this jewel box is open, Float by like clouds, passing by like the weather. If you get stuck on a thought, get drawn away, or you become aware that the jewel box is closed around a thought, Okay, this is an opportunity to come back. Relax your forehead, let your whole head sink into the mat. And then to open the awareness of your mind. Continuing to develop this awareness of passing thoughts, this weather blowing through, with a light and passive curiosity. There's no need to attach judgment to the thoughts as they pass through. Just making use of this opportunity to notice what comes up and then to let it flow by. Breathing in and out. Contemplating the open-minded feeling of relaxed and passive observation of clouds. 
clouds over a mountain range. I'm going to bring some movement into your fingers, into your toes. Starting to circle your hands, wrists, ankles. Gently turning your head side to side. Stretching your arms alongside your head. It's a long stretch. Arms and legs. Yawn. If you feel ready, you can roll yourself onto your right hand side. Your arm like a pillow. I'm taking a moment here to consolidate the practice. How it felt, what you noticed. Without attaching any judgment to that, good or bad, we can put this practice behind us. Kiss it goodbye. And then gently come up to a seated position. Bring your hands out towards your knees, deep breath in. And exhale, hands circle in towards the chest. Thanks for practicing the deep yoga, slight yoga. Namaste.